All right, Monday night, I have no friends. It is officially bare metal hours. So tonight we're talking about how to blink the LED on the Raspberry Pi Pico with nothing but bare metal assembly. So to get started, we're going to have to take a look at the pinout. So this is the uh, just the full pinout of the Pico. And what we're interested in, in is this uh, the LED right here. The um, As you can see, it is GP25, so out of the uh, GPIO, um, it is the 25th pin. And you'll also want to have the RP2040 data sheet at hand. Um, this is a very well documented chip, um, and I highly recommend just like digging into the documentation, really like get to know the chip since it's it's a pretty cool chip. But um, so first thing we'll need to do, uh, I have this text document right here. Uh, the first step, it's a four step process to blink an LED. We'll need to first get the GPIO out of uh, reset. So let's start digging through this address map. So we're going to look in the APB peripherals and here we go, reset space. So basically every time you uh, turn the Pico on and off, it goes through reset mode, which um, I'm not sure exactly why it does this, but basically kind of locks down certain uh, peripherals into a reset that then they have to be released. So here, um, here we have the reset base. So the reset base is at, uh, if I can, uh, where the, here it is. Uh, reset base is at 4,000 C thousand. Um, and what we're interested in is the uh, IO bank right here. So the IO bank is the uh, is bit five in the reset register, and the reset register is what's known as an atomic register. So um, if we go back to the beginning, oh here it is. So to access atomic registers, I'm not going to dig into what makes it atomic. Um, just know it has to do with the fact that this is a dual core processor. Um, what we're interesting in the uh, clear, so we're going to take the address of the reset and then we're going to add 3000 in hex. And this will, uh, when we uh, write data to the register, it'll, we're basically telling it to clear it. So we're giving it information on how to clear uh, the reset. So let's start writing some code. All right, so the first thing we'll want to do is have our reset clear address. So our base, um, first we're going to need four bytes, and then our base is 4,000 C thousand. But because we're clearing it and we have to use the weird atomic offset, uh, we're going to add 3,000 to that, so EDF. And then we'll want to go, uh, was it load? Let's load this into register zero. So load reset clear. And then let's move, um, because we're the IO bank is the sixth bit in the register. We're going to move 32 into R1. And then we're just going to store R1 into R0. Um, and then the offset is 0. So this just moves the number 32 into this address, which tells the system to uh, release the IO bank from reset. Now the next step is to make sure that the reset is done. So we're going to create a little loop um, and then we'll need a second address. So let's call this reset done. And oh, where is it? So subsystem resets. Yeah, here we go. The reset done register is at offset 8. So let's just take this address. I want to bring it back to base. And then 
uh, let's just have this reset base. I think that's more orthodox. All right, so then we'll load our base into register zero. And then we'll want to load that into R1. And I think it is, we're going two. Uh, yeah, we're going two. And then because uh, it does it by word and the done register is just two words off from the base. So that's where we're loading it with that offset. And then we'll s compare R1 with zero. And then we'll say branch if equal back to reset. So once it is reset, this uh, R1 should not return zero. And then the next step is to assign the uh, 25th pin, since that's where our LED lies, to the uh, CO. Now the CO, um, if we go back to the documentation, because this is a dual core system, the CO kind of acts as like this mediator between um, the cores and the GPIO. And the CO kind of makes sure um, we don't have like race conditions and stuff. Uh, yeah, single cycle IO block. That's what the CO stands for. And what we're interested in is the um, GPIO control, which actually isn't, we're not dealing with the CO yet, but if we go back to our, uh, where is it? The address map. So we want to look for our IO bank. So here's our IO bank and we'll want the control pin, the uh, 25th control pin. So here we go, list of registers and GPIO 25 control, here we go. So our base is going to be, oh, let's call this control. And then our base, what was that? Zero X 4,000, I think it was like 14. Yeah. So that's our base and we're controlling what was it CC yes yeah, CC so that is our uh, control register for the 25th pin and then uh, what was it we go load R0 control and if we take a look at the control register, um, where does it say it? We basically need to assign it the CO. So we need to tell it that it's because each, um, yeah, here we go, functions, it's up here. So the uh, control registers can have a variety of functions that need to be defined. And what we're interested in is it's the CO. So we're giving it the, uh, we're gonna give it five, so it's telling it the fifth function. So move R1 five, and then we're gonna store R1 into R0. So all this does is tell the 25th control register that it is now under the direction of the CO. And now we can actually start using the CO. So Let's go, um, we're just going to need a CO base. The CO is very straightforward. So here we go, CO base. And where is 
is it? GPIO. The first thing, uh, very similar to kind of like how AVR does it with their um, pins. We'll first need to assign the GPIO that it's an output. So we're going to go, let's first load our um, CO register. So CO base, we'll load that into R0. And then uh, actually first we'll need to, let's just move one to R1 and then we'll go left shift R1 and we'll want to shift it over 25 times because we're going to the 25th pin. So yeah, we load our CO base and then we say we're going to store R1 into R0 with the offset, what was it, at 20? Yeah, 20. Well, we're setting the output, so 24. And 24, we're going to go 5, I believe. Yeah? Wait, no, I'm dumb as shit. This is in hex, so what? We'll divide, so 14 in hex, that's 20. Um, no, what, what am I looking at? No, we're, we're looking at 32. So 32 divided by 4, 8, so we want 9. Yeah. We have an offset of 9, so that enables the output, and then. Let's, let's see if I can do this in my head. Yeah, if we're then setting the output pin, that's 20. 20 divided by 4 is 5. All right. Uh, and, yeah, I believe this is, yeah, so our four steps. So we, so to recap, we release it from reset. We check the reset if it's done. Uh, we set the control. And then we, I guess it's five steps. I'm really fucking dumb. And then we enable the output, and then we set the output. So let's assemble this. Oh, fuck, I forgot to put in the CO base. What was that? I think it's D, just all the way through, if I remember. Yeah. I can remember some stuff, and then we'll assemble this. Um, the RP2040 is based off the Cortex M0 Plus, which uses the ARM V6M instruction set. So it's a thumb mode only processor. Um, and then, what did I do wrong? Store. Oh, uh, fuck, do I? There we go. And then let's link it. And then it needs to be in the UF2 file format. So um, I kind of wrote my own little clunky UF2 uh, file maker, so it just takes a binary and then turns it into a UF2. All right, uh, quick um, little error. We need to have it aligned. So we'll just go, um, because all these have to be word aligned and because these are half word instructions, but these are word values, we'll just need to put a, uh, two bytes of zero in between the code and the values. So now if we run our uh, assembler and then I have my Pico set up. So we just drop our UF2 file in. And as you can see, there is our LED. It is on. 
So, uh, let's do, let's make it a little more interesting. Let's have it blink. So, first we'll need a delay function. So let's just create delay. Let's just call it del. And then let's say we have like a number in R3. So we'll just subtract R3 from one. And we'll say branch if not equal back to del. So until R3 is a zero, we'll, um, it will just be in this loop. And I'll need a big number. So let's say we have in this number mil. And I think a million is that in hex. I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's big enough. And then let's rewrite some of this. So let's have a loop. And then in this loop, first we'll act, well, we'll want this output enable outside it. So this loop, let's go. I need to go back to our link register. So let's load our million into R3 and then we'll branch and link with the delay function. So this delay function will just count down from 1 million and then when it's done it'll jump back to here. And then after that, let's turn it off. So if we look back at our documentation, so right after output set, we have output clear, which is just one above. So let's just do the exact same stuff, but with an offset of six. So now we turn on our LED, count to one million, turn off our LED, count to one million, and then We'll jump back to the beginning of the loop. So if I upload this to my Pico and I do not need this alignment anymore. You gotta kind of play this alignment game. If you really want to lose your mind, you can try to count to make sure you're aligned. So like pretty much all of these are going to be two bytes except for BL. That's a four byte instruction. So it just happens that this is properly aligned. It's kind of a 50-50 uh, shot. But here we have our LED blinks. All right, now let's try something a little more risque. Um, Let's write to another GPIO pin. So let's say, let's go to our pinout. Let's say we want to uh, turn on an LED connected to GP21. So a very similar process, except we're going to be using, uh, we'll need to shift this over 21 bits instead of 25, and we'll need a different control register. So here we have, GPIO control, GPIO 25 control is a uh, CC, but what we'll need, um, here it is, let's see, 21 control, yeah, uh, we have AC, so we just change this to an A, alright, so now everything is assembled, and if I, um, let's plug this in, here I have a little LED circuit wired up. Uh, forgive the abhorrent wiring, but if we drop in our UF2, as you can see, this LED blinks on and off. And uh, yeah, that's all there really is to uh, bare metal programming on the RP2040. Uh, very cool chip. 
I'll link the uh, documentation in the description as well as uh, the GitHub to both this code and um, I'll throw in my uh, code for my UF2 program. It's pretty simple. But uh, yeah, go go uh go play around with it.